Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's Linda. Oh, no, and Debbie. <laughs> Hi. I know. I just did this to annoy her today. Because she, she was laughing about my other videos. I wore this around the store for a couple of days, and everybody said, well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I love the 4th of July. I think it's really fun to celebrate. So we get lots of little bling stuff here that we I'm not wearing that fun. one. Don't even think about oh, it. Oh, <laughs> well, this is not quite so bad. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we are here today to celebrate with you on some wonderful, wonderful Great show presentations on Brother. Yes, we are. We are very fortunate to have our educator, Barbara Michalacek, with us. And Barbara is going to show us some really wonderful things about the Luminaire. Uh, we're, Debbie and I are going to talk about the packages. Can we do packages? that real quick? We can do that real quick. And, and maybe before we do that, um, we should let them know, if you are just joining us for the first time, we've been doing this all week. We'll continue through the 4th of July. And we are giving away a lot of stuff. <laughs> so make sure you sign up for our to, to, on our website. Make sure you um, fill out the form for our giveaways. So and we're going to actually be giving away a Brother Pace Setter sewing Woo! machine <laughs> at the end of our sale, and we'll announce the winner on July eighth, Thursday, okay. July eighth. That's so a big day. come one, come many. Tell your friends or don't <laughs> because if you want to win. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but geez. tell all your friends. There are free giveaways. So, um, but do you have anything free today? Today we've got somewhere at the end of this presentation, at the end of this today, mm -hmm. we will be giving away five smaller prizes. Wow. But so, they're still really good. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that part to Debbie. I won't, you won't see me, but she's going to, because she just gives away the store a lot of times. I do. So I, I, it's hard for me to see. That. I love so. sewing and I want to grow the love of sewing <laughs> to everyone. So. We're going to start with the packages that we have for the 4th of July, and then we're going to do a real short little video. Then Barb's going to do an education presentation on some really wonderful things about the machine. So the machine that I'm sitting in front of right now is just a fabulous one. I know many of you that have a top-of-the-line machine. Maybe it's a Vernina, maybe it's a Brother, maybe it's Fa for Viking. Viking. Um, do oh, also Juki. have this. Yeah, A lot of you do because this is a sewing and embroidery machine. It's a 3600. It is a wonderful machine because it's got the bigger hoops. I think that it's one of the best machines out there as a second machine or an easy to carry to class. Or even as um, a first machine to yeah, start off yeah, sewing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and many people that are started with a 4x4 four four hoop, and that's a great entry level, and we have those on sale too. But they go up to this quite quickly, and many of them keep their 4x4. Four four. But do you know what the package is that we have with this? Because it's a phenomenal package. Um, I believe this is it right in front of me here. And I Free with the 3600. So you get some 24 spools of the Brother Pace mm -hmm. Setter thread, and then you have the dual function foot control, mm -hmm. um, the pedal. You want me to break it open? Oh, oh, you're so daring, Nikki. <laughs> so He's having it's us break about, this open. Um, it's, I know that this is almost 300 and this is 130 so you got almost a $500 package. This is great, this foot control. And I know, so, Barbara, you're watching this, or, or she's here too, so and these she'll are be talking about Classic embroidery later. thread, the Disney threads Ooh. for any of the Disney characters. Oh, look at the ones on the back. And speaking of Disney characters, do you see what I have on today? You have some Disney characters? To see if they, see if they can uh, figure out who these are. Oh, can you zoom not, in on it? Okay. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because the, um, you know who these are. They're Huey, Dewey. Oh, I, would, I want them to tell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it says it on there. <laughs> oh, if it zooms in. And this is probably it. Mickey hiding behind the cupcake and Minnie yep. hiding behind the cupcake. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't they fun? And then mm -hmm. I'm going to turn around. Oh, I think you've got I the calico. Love <gasps> this one. This yes. is really fun. This is a very, very fun one to do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I hope you're going to have fun. I. You know, everybody says, well, I don't have any little kids for Disney. We don't need any We're little big kids, kids for Disney. We're big kids. <laughs> we have mm -hmm. a lot of fun with it, right? We do. Uh, okay, so this package is wonderful. Um, pricing, I don't even know if I can say it. You're going to show the video on that? Okay, but oh, they can buy this online. Great. Or they can call the store, either one. Let's show if it's... Right, but you want to show that 30 yeah. second? Yeah. Um, Okay, quick. So okay. we're going we're gonna to show you a video right now on how to navigate through our website to get to... Um, the brother sale.
So we hope that helped you, right? Right, right. <laughs> to get to navigate on our website. And you know, you can redo that again and just stop in the middle of it and look at it because I know it's sometimes confusing. How do I get there? How do I find this product? How much is it? Um, one of the things we did not mention that is really key, we are giving during this sale with a 1600, we, the 1600 is the um, brother machine that also has good big hoops, but it's an embroidery only. And that 1600 is coming with a free class and you get to choose between the 100 Modern Quilts, the um, Ricky Tim, or the Biani. Biani uh, bag, bag class. Right. And that, right. on, when you navigate through that, you'll see what it is. If you don't understand what those classes are, they're, they're, they're $200. They're $200 yeah. value for sure. And they are amazing, amazing yeah. classes. Yeah. You yeah. learn so much. That's free. So, so we're going to go through that and show the video right now? Can you show that? Because we also, on the uh, 3600, they are able to choose a, a class also. Okay, They choose one of the three classes that are available. So Nick, can you show them that real quick? Okay. <laughs> And Oops. Log Cabin's a great block because it can be either a modern quilt or a traditional <laughs> one. And you know, you can change it up by placement, by color choice. I've seen some fabulous, fabulous quilts. Now for traditional log cabins, the traditional log cabin almost always has a... Hello everyone. I am here with two of my favorite people. <laughs> I, uh, we paid about, her to say that. <laughs> <laughs> a quarter goes a long way. I know. <laughs> Today we're going to start with the Dutchman's puzzle. It is in the upper right hand corner on my topper and Suellen. Yeah. It is a spinning uh, flying geese. It's made basically an act. We're, today we're going to be doing number 15, the double nine patch. The double nine patch is, is really, a, it's, it's nine patches embedded within another nine patch. And it's a great way. Welcome back. I have some exciting news. Although COVID has really changed things for many of us for the past year, we are starting the planning for a get together at the conclusion of this uh, quilt along. And so, welcome back. This is our second session with 100 Modern Quilt Blocks. So the first session after completing the, doing the first session, Hello everyone, it's Linda and Mary Hi. from Linda's Ease and this is our November Serger Club 21. And Mary's going to do the presentation and the projects and boy does she have projects for you today. For the holidays. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm one of the sewing educators here at Linda's Ease Sewing Center in Arlington Heights. And this is Serger Club for June 2021. Uh, this is the second part of a two-part club. In, uh, in Sew Club for May, we did a design and cut out a, uh, a blouse pattern using a rectangular construction. And here we are going to put it together completely on the serger. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to get started right now. I have... Hi, everybody. We're here for Embroidery Club today. This is Dennis and... I'm Mary, and we're bringing you, like Dennis said, Embroidery Club together today. We're gonna to be doing cut work. For Linda Z Sewing Center, and today's project that we're doing is the June bag for Bags by Annie. It's called Hold Everything. I was truly surprised when I started this project and preparing for this class because I thought, how could something so small hold everything? 
Let me show you my own personal bag that I've made out of this pattern and all the things it does. One of the fantastic things about this pattern is you will get a lot of practice on how to do various kinds. Welcome to the Annie ba um, Bags class. Today we're talking about mar to market to market. So I hope that helped. It does help, I think, sometimes to see all the different things that we're giving with these machines. Remember, the 1600, we're giving one. The 3600, you get to choose one of those classes that we just showed. And now, I know Barbara's going to come on and show you the Luminaire, but before she does that, I want to explain what the package is because it is fabulous. And we only have a limited amount, so I don't want you to think everybody, if, if you're going to think about a Luminaire, which is the, the Brother XP2, you're really seriously thinking about it. They're top of the line. It is a, like Debbie said, luminescently beautiful <laughs> luminaire. You better <laughs> get your order in because here's what we're giving for the 4th of July. Where You want to start with this? Sure, the uh, PE Design 11 software. So if you are wanting to create your own designs, edit your own designs, right. embroidery designs, beautiful, beautiful. You know what I love this for is the um, photo stitch. In the, it's in there. here. I know, Barb, you use it a lot. It is one of my favorites because you can Absolutely. copy a photo and stitch it out on your machine. What else? Well, look at here. <laughs> Embroidery Design Collection. How many? I think this, this is not a typo. 2,500 designs. Wow. 2,500 embroidery and designs. And then here's the thread to sew with it. And oh, look, there's something else. Stop. Wow. What is Stop. this? Stop. It says you have the activation code for Angela Wolf's um, uh, Luminaire class. Oh, wow. It's the master class, they call it, hosted oh, by wow. Angela Wolf. And wow. she is another excellent educator that works with Brother. Yeah, 15 chapter. Ch we also have our own uh -huh. resources right. to, to right. teach you how to use the, the Luminaire course. We have them easy. online, we do it in person, and of course we give you some other things. What else do you have back here? Well, we have some, some stabilizer, stabilizer to start you right. out. And this okay. is a medium weight. Uh, and then this is almost too big to carry here. Well, we, no, I've got it. it. Okay. Oh, two, there we we're go. working together. So wow. you get luggage <laughs> for your, so there inside of this luggage is the, no, we won't open it, Mom, okay. but it's got, you've got the embroidery <laughs> unit luggage as well and all kinds of other um, <laughs> luggage pieces inside of that. Okay, so we have some really, really wonderful um, packages, that whole thing now. Oh, something else. The VIP card. <laughs> what is the VIP card? 25% off all Brother product that's got a logo on it for a whole year. That is a huge savings. Plus, we give you a dollar off fabric for a lifetime, lifetime. of anything. And you, you have a lot I, of fabric right I now. I am the <laughs> one who, who miserably makes everyone put fabric away because there are thousands of bolts. Well, that we, we, we love seeing there's new ones I know. that just came new, in. We new ones it. are always coming in, and it's really beautiful fabric. So you get that dollar off. You can call us up. You're in, uh, in um, Timbuktu, and you <laughs> say, I need Kona uh, Red, and uh, we'll put a, car, a yard in an envelope and you get a dollar off so, right away. So basically what she's saying is that we have all 380 or so of the Kona solid Every colors color. yep. from Robert Kaufman. Yeah. So they are beautiful. Okay. Okay, we'll let Barb right. in. Now, wait, <laughs> one, one last thing, and Barb, oh. we're going to let you in. I have a special for people. This is really cool. Those of you that have a scan and cut and never got the roller feed, um, this is a hundred and twenty some dollar attachment that you can do big long rolls. You can see it with vinyl here. You can do a little wallpaper around your bathroom or a child's banner. I mean, there's just tons of things. I have three of these that you can purchase, but calling the store for $25. And there's only three, so there's, <laughs> we just wanted to have some fun with this. So the first three that call, get it free, for, or get it for $25. It's just about free. And then those of you that have a Luminaire 1 or an XP1, this is the upgrade package. It's exactly this wonderful, and I know, Barb, you'll probably talk about this magnetic hoop, the upgrade package. And I don't have with me the magnifying lens because they're very hard to get, but we have a limited amount of these. These are normally $1,316 or whatever it is. We have done a huge, and there's a limited amount, for you to get 50% off, which comes to about 600 and some. Yep, for the upgrade. Yep. So um, you have, we actually that have, will be on the website. We actually have the magnifying glass. We just forgot to bring yeah, it from the other building. To. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I think that I know that's a lot of information, but 
I want to thank everybody for joining us for Debbie. Um, I'm, I'm going to duck out, but Barbara is going to start and showing you <laughs> why you want to order one of these now. Barbara, and, take and, it. And one last thing. If yes. So Tina, do we know where Tina was joining us from because she had a power outage? Yeah, it was really. We, we oh. may we were we were going to have a second educator with Barb um, and Tina. She may join us, so yeah. we may have a surprise uh, a right. gu guest, yeah. uh, second guest. <laughs> right, exactly. Every, have anybody had storms lately or yeah. power outages? Yeah. So if this does, if she isn't able to get in, Barbara is. She, we've she will take with over. Her for many many years, she many. is one of the top educators with uh, Brother. We are thrilled to have you here, Barb, and I'm going to let you take it away. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having me, you guys. And this is exciting about the 4th of July sale. Uh, and it's all week long. So make sure you check into their website and go into the store and see all the great things that uh, they're offering. So today, uh, my portion was going to be on custom quilting with the Luminaire. They asked me what my favorite thing was about the machine. And that is my favorite thing. I was a garment sewer long before I became a quilter. In fact, uh, my background is in theater, and so costuming and decorating sets and all of those things is my background. So you'll see in some of my samples, I use lots of different fabrics, not just cotton when I quilt, because I started with all the other fabrics. So I'm going to, to show you many different ways that you can custom quilt. Some of them I'm doing the very simplest way possible. Each one of these can be done several different ways, and it just depends on where you're at and what you've discovered and how you want to do it. But let's get started. My first one is a placemat. So this is just a little placemat that I did with the built-in. Oh, I got to switch my camera. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I got so excited. I just, um, there we go. Yep. So this a simple um, placemat that I started with the design. Your camera is a little bit choppy. 187. And I'm hearing Linda, just so you know. Oh. I don't know how to fix that. I think that's my internet. Does Nick have any suggestions? Okay. All right, go ahead and talk about this. So I started with the design built into the machine. So under Disney, I have these little hands right there. And what I want to do is quilt around the outside of these hands and quilt inside these hands. So I'm going to show you real simply how to do that. The first thing I have to do is make an outline around whatever design you bring in that you want to quilt around. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to this flower. That's an outline of a flower and it automatically gives me an outline. I don't want any distance uh, between it there and I don't care about the inside. So the last, the only thing I can do is what's down here on the right lower hand corner and it says memory. So I press that. If I don't know what it's going to do, it will tell me. It says you can go back and recall this in the design center under this icon. So it tells you very clearly where to go. So I'm going to say OK. And it takes me back to the beginning. So I want to add that quilting around it. So I'm going to go to add. And it is in the design center where I have the outline. So I'm going to go to the design center right here. To bring back my hands, it told me it was under this icon and it lied to me because it's not there. Well, it is, but it was under the outline. Remember the flower? So if I go into the flower, I can find my hands and say, okay. So now all I have on here is an outline of the hands and that's all I want. Then I want to fill around the hands. So I'm going to go into this space here. This is for the, the larger areas, and I can either do a straight fill or a stippling, or I can do any one of these 
designs that are built into the machine. You have 42 choices. I did these goofy circles and I'm gonna come back, I'll leave them red so you can see what that looks like. I guess Tina says she's on now. You go, if you hear that. So I'm gonna go in here to the fill bucket and I'm going to just touch outside of the hands and it automatically fills. Now I said I wanted to do something inside the hands too. So I'm going to do that, but not till I go to next. Oh, no, I don't need to go to next. Got to go to return. <laughs> if you goof up like I did, all you have to do is return. So now I want to go inside the hands and I'm going to select a different pattern. I did the crosshairs and come back. I'll leave this one, let's say, yellow. I hope you can see that. And the fill bucket is still on, so I just touch inside the hands and they're done. What I don't like about this is see that line goes all the way through? These hands are in different directions, so there's no way that that line should run the same. So I'm going to rotate one of them so it's very obvious that they're in different directions. That's where I go to next. And now on this page, again, as I said, custom designing, you can do all kinds of things. Up here, it shows me what pattern it is now going to work with. I always like to link anything that is stitched with the same pattern. And I always change all my backgrounds to 200% because that's a lot of quilting in a little space. So now it's redigitizing and look at how much less quilting there is, which is exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to do the arrows here and it has a red box around this hand because I have not linked them together yet. If I link them together, it'll do both hands at the same time. But remember, I want to just rotate one of them. So here's my rotate. I'm going to go 30 degrees and see if I like it. If I don't like it, I just go back and change it. So you can't see that yellow, but you'll see it in a minute. It did rotate. Again, I change everything to 200% and say okay, but I should have linked them together and it would have changed both hands at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's confused because one of them's already changed, but it'll fix it. <laughs> and now they'll both be large and you'll see that in a second. I also change to a single run. So that's thickness. It'll either be like a triple run or I only want a single run in this. And when I'm all done with that and I say set and OK, it takes me to my embroidery page, just like I'm used to. But it has all the elements to quilt. So what I did is I took the hands, I turned them into an applique first. Then I, well, actually, first I, I did the quilting around the back because then the applique hand would lay up on top of that. Then I did the applique and then I did these things added the extra on top of it. And that's how simple it is to just quilt around anything you can imagine. So I'm gonna do one more real quick and then we're gonna let Tina come on, okay? So this next one, I did a table runner for March and you can see it's shamrocks. And I wanted to echo around the shamrocks. So how in the world did I get it around here? Because this is not built into the machine. So I literally took this on my copier and I copied it, okay? And then I did, I just traced around the outside because remember, all I need is an outline, okay? That's how simple, you can do anything you want. So now I'm gonna go into embroidery. I think I've saved it in the pocket. I hope I saved it in the pocket. Um, maybe I didn't save it in the pocket. You know where I saved it? I saved it in the pocket of the design center. There, there it is. Okay, so then I'll take it over to embroidery. But right now it's a satin stitch. I don't want it to be a satin stitch. I actually want to do a blanket stitch so that it stitches around the edge, which it did. And I did it in invisible thread, so you can't see much. And this will turn it into a blanket stitch. Now, it can go either in or out. Now, why did that not change to blanket stitch? Oh, because I didn't touch it, stupid. You got to touch it to tell it. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's actually a blanket stitch now. Take it to my embroidery. 
And now I'm going to echo around it. And I can do that by opening edit, going to instant stipple, but I'm going to echo. And it will instantly go around my shamrock. Now that's a lot of stip of um, echoing. So I changed the spacing a lot. I don't know how much. We'll just see what that looks like. And now we have, <laughs> it's digitizing. That's closer to what I actually did. See that? You can tell it what size hoop you want this to fill out to. You can tell it how far away from the first piece that you want it to go and how far spaced out you want it to go. So again, this is the stippling. And on the inside, I actually did a different pattern in here that I filled like I filled the hands that I showed you before. So if you guys are ready, we'll go out to Tina and then I'll come back and show you some more ways to custom so weld. So Tina, wow, Tina, uh, we got, she got her electricity back up and running in her location. And so a barb that was beautiful, wonderful. I love to do those techniques on the Luminaire. And uh, I believe you can actually do those on the 10 needle now as well, the Brother 10 needle, can't you? Barb? Barb muted. Oh, Tina, yes, so, she, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just, to, just to wrap it up with Barb, yeah, Barb, um, so just wonderful. I, I love those techniques for quilting in the hoop. And I know that there are so many customers of ours who own that machine and who are begging for more uh, classes like that. So anytime you want to come and teach that class, we'll, we'll have you come out and teach that to our customers. They will, they will adore you if you do agree to do that, Barb. <laughs> okay. I'm sure she just said yes. Anytime, Debbie. Anytime you want, right? <laughs> My boss. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know we have to talk to your boss. We will talk to your boss about that. Thank you so much. Now, so we're going we're gonna to be able to um, speak with Tina, who also has the top of the line brother, Luminaire, in her studio. And uh, so, Tina. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Doing very well. Thank you so much for joining us. Remind us, now, what part of the country are you filming in, uh, coming in from? So I'm in Tennessee in a small town called Crossville, and uh, unfortunately we lost some power this morning, but we're back, so yay! Yay, back up and running. So we're going to let you tell us about your favorite features of the Luminaire, so please take it away, Tina. Oh my gosh, there's so many awesome features on the Luminaire, the projector for sure, and we'll show that, but I'm going to start with something simple. Um, and just talk about the color shuffle feature on the machine. So let me let me transfer cameras really quick here, and we'll run over to the machine. And you know, I have lots of friends who are artists, but unfortunately, I didn't get that gene. So sometimes when I need to pick colors, it's a little harder for me. So one of the things I really love in this machine is the color shuffle. So I'm going to pull up a medallion design really quick here. So we'll grab this little guy here. And if anyone's wondering, I'm using a mouse with the machine. That's why you don't see my finger on the screen. And it's a Thank really, you. really pretty design here. And so when it comes to changing colors, these machines make it really easy. So let's say that instead of this green color, I wanted uh, to pick another color. I can click on it and let's say I wanted it to be purple. So that's one way I can change colors, right? But you know, sometimes I would like to see what this medallion might look like in a lot of different colorways. And so color shuffle is one of my favorite features. So we'll just pop in here to color shuffle and you'll see here, we've got some choices. So you can pick random colors, vivid, pastels, kind of a monochromatic color scheme. Let's go ahead and pick random really quick. And then we have two options in here. The first one is auto, so we'll try that first. And that's letting the machine pick random colors for us. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you'll notice that it'll give us nine options. And they're all beautiful. And we can continue to refresh, refresh these pages as many times as we'd like. But do you see the little hearts up here? So for me, it's kind of, you know, you don't want to go backwards. So if there's one you really like, like this guy, I'll hit the heart, making it a favorite. And then we'll go ahead and refresh and let's pick a few more favorites in here. That one's really pretty. That one's gorgeous. Oh, this one's nice too. And you can just keep refreshing as many times as you like when you go through here. 
And what's really cool about the favorites is now I can go to my favorites page and I can have up to nine saved. But then this is the beauty contest where I can look at all the options and then pick the one I really like. So for example, maybe this one, then you get to see it up close. And when you're ready to stitch, you can just go to set. Isn't that fun? Now, the other thing that's in here is, you know, sometimes we're trying to coordinate perhaps with something in the house. So let's say upstairs, I have a color scheme that has kind of an aqua color and a bright green, and I've got some yellows upstairs. So here I can mark those three colors. And now when I go through and it does options for me, it makes sure that those three base colors show up in all of my designs. So this is a really fun way when you're trying to coordinate maybe with a bedroom color scheme or a dining room color scheme that you can um, get exactly the colors that you want. Isn't that fun? I really, really enjoy this quite a bit. So let's look at a couple samples because I, I don't know about you guys, but I really like to see the pretty when it's done. So here's the medallion and it's been done in three different colorways. And even though it's the same design, isn't it amazing how different it looks with the different color patterns? I just love that. A couple other ones I did this morning, you know, it's 4th of July weekend, so I needed some towels in the kitchen for the holidays. So this is a cute little design that's on the machine. And I just went in and changed up some of the colors that are in here. And here's another example. This design is also on the machine. And when you look at it on the screen, it's going to look like a poinsettia because it's in those kind of winter color schemes. But I needed something for a little gardening smock here. So I changed it up to one of my favorite blue colors. And I don't know if you can see here, there's a lot of sparkle in this design because you actually put mylar in under the stitches. And I just love that technique. I think it's really oh, yes. pretty. I, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was on. So I'm, I'm like ooing and eyeing over here. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful. So the color shuffle is really a fun way for those of you who may be. And here's another example. Um, this is one of the designs that's also on the machine, although they show it in lavenders and some lilac colors. And I needed it in warmer colors to balance out this gray shirt. But I mean, just really quickly with a couple of, you know, buttons, you can adjust it and have it any kind of color scheme that you want. So for me, that color shuffle is a great feature. Again, the only thing standing between me and being an artist is talent. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I love the way you put the designs on the, the place, the placement of the designs on that shirt. You really spruced up your shirt there. It's beautiful. Incredible. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And you get a little bit of movement by alternating, you know, top on one side and at the bottom of the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It really turned out great. So I saw Barb was showing folks a lot of quilting techniques. Um, I thought maybe you want to spend maybe a couple minutes on some of the editing options we have on the machine so that we can take the designs that are on there and do completely different things with them. That'd be great. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pop back over to the machine here. All right, so I'm just going to go to the home page to start again. So this time there's a really pretty design in here with some feathers but I wanna do something different with it. So let's go ahead and grab the feathers. They're here in category five and it's design number six. So we'll go ahead and set that. And it's a pretty big design. I'm planning to use my 10 and five eighths by 16 inch hoops. So I think it'll be fine here, but I am gonna resize it a little bit because what I wanna do is I wanna have two feathers and do some quilting around it, all right? So to resize, super easy. We just go into the edit tab here and then we'll pick size. Now, when you get in here, you've got two different options for, for resizing. The first one is if you're doing relatively minor resizing. So it's not gonna change the stitch count. It's just gonna either increase or decrease the size of the design. And so typically um, you wouldn't use that unless you're only gonna change the size 10 to 20%. I'm actually gonna change it more than that. So I use the second option here and it's resize with stitch recalculation. So this is a really powerful feature. You'll notice when I press it, it tells me it's gonna take the design back to its original size, so that's fine. And so what it's gonna do is if I make the design larger, it's gonna add stitches. And if I make it smaller, it's gonna take stitches out, but it's gonna maintain the density. So my design will be just as pretty in a small size as it would be if I made it much bigger. So I love having that flexibility. So let's come in here. And I'm going to make this, I'm using proportional uh, decrease in size, so it's making it shorter and thinner at the same time. 
So I'm gonna take it down to right around seven inches tall. Let's see, that's good, all right? So you, while, while it's still highlighted on the screen, I'm also gonna do a little preliminary placement of my design. So you'll see it's up here now in the top right, and we'll go ahead and hit okay. Now what I'd like to do is make a second feather. And so I could go back and add here, but we have a duplicate button here. So let's just go ahead really quick and duplicate it. And see now I have that second copy. And it, what I love is it comes in a little bit offset. So you don't have to wonder whether or not it made the copy, right? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna rotate it. So here's my rotate button. And I'm gonna take it 180 degrees. So I want them in opposite directions. And then here I am just sliding it into place here. I'm gonna get it roughly where I like it on the screen. All right, so a couple of things you, I wanna make sure that I have them aligned, the vertical centers aligned. So we do have align keys on the machine, which are really awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come into multiple select and I'll pick the one with the three pink boxes and that's gonna get both of my feathers at the same time, which is what I wanted. And then here's my align button. And what I wanna do is align them around the vertical center. So that's this option right here. And see how it did all that shifting for me and now they're perfect and I don't have to worry about it. I'm also gonna center them in my hoop. And so just that easy, I have them perfectly placed in the hoop, which is really a fun feature. And then I know Barb just showed you some quilting really quickly if I wanna add quilting stitches around it with them both selected. Again, I'm picking my hoop size. And I know she showed you stippling and echoing, and we can also access all of our beautiful decorative fills in here as well. So we'll just click in here real quick, and we'll select one of these beautiful fills. The flowers would be probably pretty on this one. And just that quick, it's gonna add it in the background on my machine. So, I mean, think about all the things that we did. We took a single feather design, we sized it so it would fit. And of course I can come in here and increase the size of that pattern so I can decrease the quilting stitch count here. But just in a few clicks, we were able to take a simple design and make a really elegant quilting pattern with it. And I just love that on this machine. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. So you it's very, very- Oh, sorry. No, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. You could have even made an oval shape around the uh, feathers and then contained the flower background into the oval. And that would have been beautiful on a shirt or on the back of a, on the back of a jacket or something like that. Instead of the rectangle yeah. shape of the hoop, you could have had a, an oval shape containing the background quilting design. Exactly, exactly. Yep, that would have been really pretty for a jacket. So really quick, let's go ahead and take a look at the little placemat that I made with that. Um, it's got the quilting, I matched the color here, so it's a little hard to see on camera. And I even use the quilt sashing function, which if you have time, I'll walk through later on today around the edges. But I mean, these machines make it so easy to do beautiful projects really, really quickly. I just, I love this machine so much. True, very true. Well, should I do another one or should we let Barb do something? How, how should I, how should we move forward? Barb, do, Barb, do you have um, something else up your sleeve for us? <laughs> Of course I do. Of course you do. <laughs> so I'm going to continue in the custom quilting because that's what I love so much. And I want to show now, if you want to do a design that's not in the machine uh, and it's something that you drew or someone else drew, it doesn't matter. You can just put it on a piece of paper, take a picture of it and send, and send it to your machine, or you can scan it in your machine if you don't want to do all that technical stuff. So I'm just gonna lay this on my, put this in my machine. And in my design center, well, I'll go back to tell you, show you where it is because that's important. Up here on this fern icon, you can either scan as an image, make it a line design or an illustration, which would be already colored in. We want a line design. So I'm gonna say line, scan and okay. And it's literally going to scan what's on my, scanning board because there is Very a camera simple. built into the machine correct exactly because there's a camera built in there's a projector built in there's a scanner built in it's all in there remember brother is the same company brother machine sewing machines as the copiers and printers and that's why we have all of this technology in our sewing machines because it was perfected many many years ago in the copiers and printers so it is now scanning the design, and then I'm 
Oh, Barb, we lost you. So, okay. wait, are you there? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Your video is down, though, isn't it? Maybe reconnect your video, Barb. Okay, I'm trying it, here. Start. And while she, if it takes her a little bit, maybe uh, Tina can can show us a new trick. Oh, there, there, she, is. there she is back again. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to now, this is what I want to put the design on. I've already done it. You can see it here, but I'm going to tell you how I did it. So I need to go around my heart. This is table runner for Valentine's Day. And I want to do overall the rest of the table runner. So very simply, <clears throat> I'm just going to take off my scan board. But once I scanned it, we have to see how it turned out in the machine. How's that for an image that uh, Pretty cool. you want to, because now it's going to stitch it for you. Sorry, I'm just going to try to put this on here while we're doing that. So we just crop this in a little bit to get rid of the outside box, get rid of some of the magnets, but I can't get rid of all of them without getting rid of some of my design. So I'm going to say, okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to come in here with the eraser and get rid of the rest because that's fine. I don't need to worry about it. So set and okay, wait a minute, I went too far. <laughs> and here's my eraser. You can make your eraser big, you can make it square, you can make it round. In this case, I just need it little and I can just use my finger. You can use your stylist. And now to know that I got it all gone, this up here will bring forward just the design or backwards. So now those magnets show up, but they are not gonna stitch. And this is what's going to stitch. So you're going to see how to do that back and forth several times. So now I have everything here, but if you scan something in, it automatically falls to a satin stitch. There's no way I want to quilt with a satin stitch. So come in here, change it to a running stitch, say, okay, fill bucket, and then the touch anywhere, touch again, and you'll hear it knock. And now, and you can tell it's a running stitch. You can also do that before you scan it in. So just so you know. So now if I turn this, um, if I go all the way to embroidery, I'm only gonna have this seven, uh, what is it? Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but my hoop is much bigger than that. So I have saved this in my pocket. So I'm gonna go in and grab it out of my pocket. There it is. And <clears throat> now I have two of them. So the one I just grabbed out of my pocket, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. And I'm going to put at the top of my hoop area because now I can fill the whole thing. And then I'm going to, like uh, Tina did, I'm going to duplicate it and bring the second one down to fill the whole thing. I should have erased that first one. Let's do it this way. Okay. Now <laughs> you can't see it. Wow. This so is have, really cool. We have a full page of quilting, which is what I want. So now I need to scan what's in my hoop. So I'm going to go all the way out of here and do that. In Design Center, in the scan thing, I want an image of what's in my hoop. Scan and OK. Because now I'm going to overlay the design on top of that and erase where I do not want it to stitch. So there are two instances where I don't want it to stitch. I don't have that heart is not built into the machine, so I can't put an outline around it. Um, but I also don't want to stitch over where I've already stitched. So here's another example as we're waiting for that to scan. This is just Easter eggs and I did it with a built-in crackle. I thought that was cute to do a crackle around eggs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just stitched in the ditch on here. It's the um, <clears throat> blanket stitch around the eggs and then all the rest is crackle. So this is the same concept that I'm showing you with the hearts. And you can see it's still scanning what's in my hoop. And then it'll show up on my screen and I'll superimpose the design on top of it. And then I can play with it, place it where I want it, erase what I don't want, enlarge what I want, because you can see it. So I'm like Tina. I did not get the artist gene, but I do have an eye for color and for um, <clears throat> 
look, balance, and things like that. So I'm going to bring, so you can see the image here again. Remember, you can bring up or brighten or lighten the image versus the stitches. And you'll see why we want to do that. Out of my pocket is my design. Now, this is just the single one. <clears throat> I already showed you how to do the whole page. So let's say I want to go up there. I definitely want to rotate it. Let's pretend like I filled my whole page. And I don't want to stitch around or on my heart. The actual lace looking there is wool. I don't want to stitch on that. So I come back in here. I grab my eraser. I'm going to leave it round, but I'm going to make it big. You can go up to 100% here. So I'm going to have a nice big circle to erase with. And I'm literally just going to go in here like this and generally go around and take out what's on top of my heart. I'm not doing the details yet because I'm going to magnify it to do the details. Now, sometimes I do that and I leave little pieces in here and I can't tell until I come up here. This time I didn't leave any pieces, but it'll be very obvious where they are and you can erase them. That's why you play with that. Now, if we magnify this a whole bunch and then pan, and that's what the hand is for, I can see that I left some of it on my area. If I bring my eraser in where I had it, it's huge. Can you see how big that eraser is? So that's okay in this case because I don't want it to be right next to the wool. I want it to be close to it so I can erase it, but always go from the outside into it. Otherwise you're gonna go too far, if that makes sense. If I start here erasing, then I've erased all of that. So I just go undo. And you can undo 50 times. So see how I'm panning around my wool and I'm just getting rid of what's going on top of it. And I'm going to show you something really important in a second here. And I'm not being real careful to get right next to it because I it's fine. If it doesn't stitch right up to that wool, nobody is going to care, <laughs> even you. Now, the important thing is that when you quilt, you want it to be one continuous stitch. And when I erased some of these things, they're no longer connected to something else. So first I'm gonna go in and tell it, I just want a running stitch and I'm going to go ahead and draw connections. So this piece right here is not connected to anything. So if I just go like that, it's gonna be connected. Don't go crazy over making sure that it's like, really, really, really connected. Now, I don't have to connect this because they are connected to something else, if that makes sense. And now here's another one that's not connected. So I have two choices. I can just erase it, but I can't use that great big eraser because it'll take it out, or I can connect it. So in this case, I'm just gonna take it out because I'm not gonna miss it, but that's not connected. So I'm gonna go back in here to my pencil and just, whoops, do a little, <laughs> and sometimes it takes more than one. And see, it goes over the edge. You're never going to see that when you see your finished product. Okay, so I think I'm all right with connecting. And you would do that with a full page and all the way around. And if you've already stitched up here, which I have, see that that's the old stitch? I would, when I rehooped it, come in, I would erase the new stitch that falls over the old stitch. And since this is random, you can never see where it starts and where it stops. So that's how you get the whole thing quilted. So if I'm happy with that, I'm gonna to go to next. And here's the important thing, thinking. Something is going to stitch with a satin stitch. Change it, absolutely, to a running stitch. Okay, link it all together. And as long as you have one red box, everything is connected. I do not have one red box. Can you see there's one here? And there's a little itty bitty one here. So I just simply go back and I go in and I fix those. So I see what it is. The second inside heart is not connected. So I would just go back and connect it. Didn't like the way I connected that. And I said, don't go crazy with it. So once you're done and it's all one stitch because you don't want all those tie-offs in the back. If it's a separate red box, it's going to be a separate tie-off. So that's the way you want to do that. 
So then this one, the next one I did with sunflowers and I just traced the cover of my pattern. And this is the um, table runner of sunflowers. And I did one pattern inside the sunflowers and I did sunflowers on the outside. Very pretty. So that's a couple of those things. I got one more here, I'll show you real quick. This is an overall pattern. So it's over all of this center part. This outside, I stitched in the ditch. Now you can see really clearly on the back. So stitched in the ditch, I just filled in all the way down the table runner with the pattern built in. And that's how easy that is to do. And this whole thing is quilted for that. And I have several more, but let's get back to Tina. <laughs> right, thank you so much. That is really interesting techniques using the Luminaire Top of the Line Brother. Tina? Yeah, those are great, Barb. I love those. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about patches. Uh, you know, I saw Barb had some Disney designs. I love Disney. So um, maybe I'll show you the samples first, and then we'll talk about how to do it. So kids were going to the park, and they needed some bags. Isn't that a beautiful bag? And the, um, the Mickey designs are great. And of course, with a bag, and this was for at night, you got to have the hoodie that goes with, right? So there's many in here. And it re it's really so quick and easy. I did these, you might be thinking both of these might be a little hard to um, hoop on the Luminaire, but I did them both as patches. So let's look and see how easy that is to do on the machine. All right. So we'll pop over here. So first of all, um, the Disney category is here. And let's say we're gonna do the mini design. So I'm in the first Disney category and here's Minnie right here. She's design number six and she's beautiful. She's nice and big, almost 13 inches tall. So of course we have our 10 and five eighths by 16 inch hoop in there. And here she is. And then to make her into a patch is such a quick and easy edit. I'm just gonna pop into edits and the icon here that looks like a badge. When I click that, you can see how it's added a satin stitch border all the way around her. And I can control how much space I want between the design and the patch. And I'm just gonna bump this out just a little bit here. And then we'll hit okay. And of course, you know, for the hoodie, it was a black hoodie. So we're gonna do a quick little color change. So let's choose this icon. And this is where we change our colors. And I'm just gonna go all the way down to the end and show you what's been added. So when I, when I picked that applique, um, icon, you see it added three stitch sequences here, a placement line, a tack down, and then the finish stitch. So what I'm going to do here is just click on the finish stitch, the satin, and change that to a black, and you'll see it automatically update on the screen, which is easy. Now, from a construction perspective on this, I stitched out B, and I stitched out the first placement line here, so a little run stitch border around the edges, and then I cut that with scissors right on that run stitch, and then what I did is I put a fusible on the back and ironed it on. But if I wanted to have stitched it on, I could have stitched now the placement line on my item and then laid what I had cut out directly on top of it. And then it would put down my satin stitches at the end. So it's just a really quick and easy way to do patches and also um, applique designs. And you know, applique is super popular now. And I did wanna show you one other sample. This is one of the other designs that's on the machine. Um, and it's really big. So this is the back of a blouse. And as you can see here, the center of the heart is the applique section, but isn't that amazing? And because it's, this is a really lightweight fabric and you don't see any puckering or anything. It just stitched out beautifully. I used one of the um, adhesive wash away stabilizers and it was just such a quick and easy project. But those patches are, my, my kids love patches. So I do patches all the time. And then the other thing I really love about the machine is lettering. You know, we do a lot of lettering, um, putting names on things and customizing it. So let's just take a really quick um, look at what we can do with some of the lettering. You know, it's the holiday weekend. So I've got one of my three kids is home and the other two are coming in later today. So I had to make a garden flag, a little welcome home for them. So really quickly, I'm gonna pop in here and there's a beautiful butterfly over here. Uh, let's see, I think it's in category 12. And let's see. And by the way, you'll notice I have a mouse, but you can also move around with your fingers. So here's that butterfly number 11. Super cute, isn't it? 
And so that, that's really pretty, but what I really want to do is add a welcome home sentiment to it. So I'm going to come in with the design. I think when I did mine, I actually did the color shuffle and changed the colors a little bit, but I'm going to add the lettering now. So we're just going to pop down here to add, and here's my, my lettering. So we're going to come in here, and so many pretty fonts that we have to choose from. I really like this number 17 with those little swirly bits. I think that's super cute. So I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to put welcome. So let's see if I can spell it correctly while I'm under pressure here. I don't know. So far, so good. <laughs> now, when it's on here, you've got several options. You can change the size here with a large, medium, or small. I'm actually going to leave mine large. I do want it to be circle text. So I'm going to come into the array. And this is where I can put a path for my text. So I want the one here, the second one down, which is going to be like the top of a circle. And that's a little too tight for me. So if we pop down here at the bottom, I can flatten out that arc. And so I'll just continue to press this until I hear that knocking noise. That means that I, I've flattened it as much as I can. So we'll hit OK. Um, at this point, if any of my letters were a little like the C and the O are a teensy bit close together, I can come in here to spacing. And you can make them snug them up a little bit. I'm going to push them apart just a wee little bit here to make sure I don't have an overlap. And when that looks good, I'm going to hit set. Now, of course, I don't want that right on top of my butterfly. And I could take my finger or my mouse and I could move it, but I want to make sure that I maintain the center. So I'm going to come into edit and I'm going to select the move option. And I'm just going to take the arrows and move up welcome until it's just a little wee bit above the wings on the butterfly. Got a little bit further to go here. That looks great. And now I'm just going to come in and add the home. So same deal, go to the lettering. I'm going to pick that same font number 17 here, <clears throat> and then we'll pick uh, home. Good news is that one's easier to spell. All right, so same kind of thing like last time. I'm going to pick array, but this time I want to shape it like the bottom of my circle, so it's going to be this guy here. And then I'm going to flatten that arc out a little bit. And don't worry about that not being a perfect circle because those lines aren't going to stitch out anyway, so that looks really good to me. I'm going to go ahead and set it. And then we'll pop in here with the, uh, and do the same thing. I'm using the move keys just so it maintains that center here. And I'll slide them into place here. And isn't that easy? So we, we have a custom message. We've pathed our text in a way. We've added it to a design. And let's take a look and see how pretty that is when it stitches out. So isn't that, won't that be nice when they, when they come in to have that hanging out in front of the house so that they know that we're really happy? I really like that. Um, the machine, I guess, yeah, we have one more minute. The machine also has a number of beautiful decorative fonts. So here's another example using the first decorative font and uh, doing a quick little tote bag for a sewing class. But the lettering, I mean, we, you know, I don't know about everyone else, but my first embroidery machine I got just to put people's names and monograms on things. So lettering ends up being a really important capability. Absolutely. Wow. Wow, I am, my head is spinning with all the things that I want to do now. <laughs> it really is. That's amazing, you guys. So both of you, uh, we just don't know how to thank you so much for this. It's been awesome. Um, did, did Barb have anything that she wanted to add? We're, we're good because we're going to, we have some things to give away. Don't we, Nicholas? We do. Yes, we have some giveaways for the people who've been patiently waiting. Now, if you are just joining us and you don't know what the giveaways are, you can, can um, let's see, how do I start? Do I start every day this week? We're giving away five smaller gifts from our Notions wall at the store. And then at the end of our 4th of July sale, we're giving away um, a bigger gift from each of the wonderful uh, vendors who have agreed to meet with us this week on our videos, on our live chats with them. And so the first, I can just go over really quickly would, what the yeah. first one was. That was the, where are we here? The Laura Star Iron is a giveaway, so we will be giving one of the red um, it's a lift. Uh, a lift irons, that is correct. And then on the second day, we had Arrow and Kangaroo, and that would be, uh, we are giving away this chair right back here to a lucky winner. And then we're actually giving away a brother machine for our brother fans. And uh, tomorrow we have the, um, 
uh, distributor or brewer for, it's all notions, distributor brewer, brewer is coming with us tomorrow. And that's a mystery giveaway. They're going to be announcing that one tomorrow. Yeah, that, there's some nice stuff, I know. And there's some really, really nice stuff that we're going to They're be. actually coming in the studio this time. And right, so we're going to have. a riot. Do you guys, have a microphone? So so I do. Oh, yeah, they, they okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to repeat what you're saying. So why don't we start with the five giveaways for today, shall we? You have the Let's wheels go. ready, Nikki. I can, yes. All right, let me get let me get my first gift. Oh, I have a wait. One second, I have to change. All right, this. so I've got my first gift that I'm going to be giving today. Who likes the Tula Pink Unicorn Head Straight Pins? One second. All right. There we, we go. go. <laughs> So let's do a drum roll and let's see who wins this. And as we're doing that, just go on our website. You can any any of these can be for the for the for the drawings at the end of the the sale period. Kathleen Shrank. Oh, I don't have uh, my sticky notes. Can I get my sticky notes, please? All right, just one moment. Bear with us here. I can write down of the winners. Hey, and what is the second one? Do you know? Okay, the second, the second product that we have is going to be a um, a Jaybird quilts mini hex and more ruler. I love this ruler. I have maybe uh, put it where the gift card is so we can show it. Oh, sorry. It. Yeah. Okay, so I put it over here where the gift card is. It is a mini hex and more ruler, and so let's go see who is going to win that ruler. I'm actually going to run. The winner is Barbara. Oh, it was Go ahead. Barbara, Barbara Carson. Carson. And I'm going to get, how many more do we have? Three? Three more. I'm going to start all three. You're going to start all three at once? So we have the names ready, yes. It might sound a bit funny, guys, but it's okay, a bit Okay, so uh, the, next, uh, the next one is going to be uh, 10 of the Clover Wonder Clips, Isabel Olsen. And I have a. Um, you want to show the wonder clips on the camera? Yeah, the wonder clips. Do you want to show them here? Yeah. The wonder clips are there, and Isabel Olson. So it's the Clover Wonder Clips. I love those clips, you guys. I can't live without them. They are awesome. You will too find that if Isabel doesn't own them. Um, they are awesome. So next one that we're going to be giving away is this um, pattern of the Zoe Zoe dress. So over it. I love this dress. Uh, who, Paula Hyman, wins that? And last but not least, we have two yards of canvas for the next winner from Cotton and Steel. So Cotton and Steel canvas, beautiful. Should I put it by the camera? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, Kathy Gruber. And Kathy Gruber wins the canvas. Good job, Kathy. Okay, so I think that is uh, a wrap for the day, isn't it, Nikki? Yeah, I mean, maybe let's talk over the specials real quick. I mean, we can show the videos uh, of a few, like, uh, do you want to talk, go over what they get, the 3600, the 1600, and the Luminaire? For the 36, so if any of you are, are thinking of purchasing the Brother 3600 during our sale this week, you do, um, not only do you get this awesome machine, it's just so awesome, this machine. I know so many people who have it already and they just love it. Um, but you get uh, uh, these Disney threads, 24 spools of the Disney threads, which are really great. Um, and you want to add to that at some point too because um, the colors are so amazing. And then the dual function foot control also comes with that during this, uh, this, during this week, during the 4th of July sale. Um, what else did you want me to go a, over? A free class. Oh, right. So if you if you purchase this machine, Linda Z's is offering one of our three online classes, our virtual classes. And they can get a glimpse at the beginning of the broadcast. We showed a five minute video showing all the classes we've done in the last year. That's and true. So um, this is actually being recorded. So we are going to be putting it both on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and look at that video that explains. Actually, you show excerpts from the classes. So yeah. that's really great. Um, and the 1600 also is embroidery only. Yeah, Same size it. hoops that come with the 36, but you don't have the sewing function. You have just the embroidery function. Yeah, so um, 
That's only fourteen ninety nine. I think available and on that's our website. Available mm -hmm. online and on our website. And there was also a video um, uh, that we were showing you at the beginning of our show here today mm -hmm. about how to navigate through the website to get. We'll probably to those. show that again uh, when we wrap up, just for them to see where they okay. can see because all our broader machines that we have in stock are in special for July for sale and. We invite you to call us to see come for the sale. Uh, we're open okay. Sunday. We'll have hot dogs and looking yeah, forward know, to seeing you guys. I know. My gosh, huh? we're actually going to have hot dogs and uh, we're going to have um, individually wrapped cookies and and uh, potato. Well, the hot dogs will be individually wrapped also, and li you know little packages of the of the um, um, ketchup and mustard and <laughs> potato chips and cookies. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be really fun. Um, we're doing the best we can during the, in the circumstances of. Uh, and another year of we're trying to phase out of the COVID problem and uh, keep you guys entertained. And uh, so thank you for coming out to our store. We will be here on Sunday, July 4th from 11 o'clock to 4 p.m. To 4, exactly. Yeah. And we want to thank Barb and Tina again so much. That's right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Barb and Tina, for coming out. And uh, we know you are super busy people. And we just wanted to tap into your creative brains and share that with our customer base. So thank you so much again for coming. Thank you, brother. Tim Novak, we love you too. <laughs> and uh, we will see everyone tomorrow at 10 a.m. with 10 Brewer. 10 a.m. That's going to be a fun one too, That's guys. That's going to so, be fun, you guys. Yeah. There's going to be a crowd of us behind here. And so we'll end with a video real quick to show you how uh, to shop the specials on our website. Okay. All right. Bye. And Oops. log cabin's a great block because it can be either a modern quilt or a traditional <laughs> one. And you know, you can change it up by placement, by color choice. I've seen some fabulous, fabulous quilts. Now for traditional log cabins, the traditional log cabin almost always has a... Hello everyone. I am here with two of my favorite people. <laughs> I, uh, we paid her to say that. <laughs> a quarter goes a long way. I know. <laughs> Today, we're going to start with the Dutchman's Puzzle. It is in the upper right hand corner on my topper and Sue Ellen? Yeah. It is a spinning uh, flying geese. It's been basically an act. We're, today we're going to be doing number 15, the double nine patch. The double nine patch is, is really, a, it's, it's nine patches embedded within another nine patch. And it's a great way. Welcome back. I have some exciting news. Although COVID has really changed things for many of us for the past year, we are starting the planning for a get together at the conclusion of this uh, quilt along. And so, welcome back. This is our second session with 100 Modern Quilt Blocks. So the first session after completing the, doing the first session, Hello everyone, it's Linda and Mary Hi. from Linda's Ease and this is our November Serger Club 21. And Mary's going to do the presentation and the projects and boy does she have projects for you today. For the holidays. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm one of the sewing educators here at Linda's Ease Sewing Center in Arlington Heights. And this is Serger Club for June 2021. Uh, this is the second part of a two-part club. In, uh, in Sew Club for May, we did a design and cut out a, uh, a blouse pattern using a rectangular construction. And 
here we are going to put it together completely on the serger. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to get started right now. I have... Hi everybody, we're here for Embroidery Club today. This is Dennis and... I'm Mary and we're bringing you, like Dennis said, Embroidery Club together today. We're going to be doing cut work. Hunt for Linda Z Sewing Center and today's project that we're doing is the June bag for Bags by Annie. It's called Hold Everything. I was truly surprised when I started this project and preparing for this class because I thought how could something so small hold everything? Let me show you my own personal bag that I've made out of this pattern and all the things it does. One of the fantastic things about this pattern is you will get a lot of practice on how to do various kinds 